All right. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Roddy Hassan. I'm a technical solutions architect at Cisco Systems, and I'm going to be taking you through a, uh, a demo of uh, deploying a Cisco software defined access fabric um, using Zero Touch. Uh, I'll get into uh, what Zero Touch means here uh, in a few minutes, um, but uh, this this will be our demo. So what I'm going to cover is uh, PNP or plug and play on uh, on a Catalyst 9300 switch. Uh, PNP on a Catalyst 9800 WLC that's running in VMware. So this is a new feature uh, in Cisco DNA Center and will be, will be available uh, here in a, in a few weeks. Uh, I'm going to take you through Cisco DNA Center device provisioning. Uh, I'm going to use a template just to kind of show basic uh, provisioning with templates. I won't get too deep into templates. Um, I'm going to automate the uh, fabric underlay. So uh, we're going to build an SDA fabric underlay using LAN automation. So again, uh, it's zero touch uh, using uh, the LAN automation feature, which will build uh, and configure and onboard these devices uh, and have an underlay ready to go for your SDA fabric. Uh, and then I'm going to take you through a basic SDA workflow. Uh, we're going to create our fabric. Uh, we're going to use fabric enabled wireless as well, right? So we're going to use automation to deploy those SSIDs and configure the fabric parameters. Uh, we'll test those. Uh, we're going to also uh, do a guest, both a guest network and a campus network. So uh, we're going to show how uh, we can uh, build virtual networks to segment our users from our guests. Uh, and we'll do that with both wired and wireless. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about SDA for distributed campus or uh, what used to be called multi-site. And that allows us to connect uh, multiple fabric sites together uh, while ma maintaining end-to-end -end segmentation and policy. So I've got that here in the demo as well. I'm going to show you Fabric in a Box. So Fabric in a Box will allow you to run all of the SDA features on a single device or on a single switch, uh, including embedded, embedded wireless. So we're actually going to use that Fabric in a Box to be our WLC. Uh, and then I'll just do some very basic policy and segmentation use cases just to make sure our Fabric is running and, and show you what Fabric or what the policy will look like. So what I won't be covering, uh, this list is pretty long and can get longer, right? Because there's a lot of topics with SDA and SDA fabric, and you could go as deep or shallow as you, as you really need to. But uh, off the top, I'm not going to cover the basics of Cisco SDA access. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you understand uh, what an SDA fabric is, what the, the benefits are, what a border, a control plane, and a fabric edge are used for. Um, so I won't cover that too much. It'll come out while I'm discussing it, but uh, I'm not going to get too deep into an introduction of, of Cisco SD access. Uh, I'm not going to get, again, I'm not going to get too deep into Cisco ICE either. That could be a, a whole series of videos uh, by itself. And there are a t there's a ton of ICE information out there already. Um, I will just show you the integration that I've got and maybe look at a policy just to show you how the onboarding of a device works. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to cover multicast. Again, multicast can be uh, its own topic. Uh, there are a few ways to do it and a few uh, gotchas and caveats with it as well. Plus, I'm not a big fan of multicast, but that's just a personal choice. Um, APIs I won't get into. Again, it tends to be a moving target, and I'm just, frankly just not that good at them. Uh, but again, APIs uh, would be a separate topic, right? There's a lot of people that are asking for API information and, and, and training videos. Um, maybe in the future we can get around to one, but right now I just want to cover the basics of SDA itself. Uh, and I also won't be covering some of the more advanced Cisco SDA features like Layer 2 flooding, um, guest VN anchoring, uh, broadcast networks, wake on LAN, all that kind of stuff. There are a lot of other features in SDA that could be covered, but they would be better for a separate video. So real quick on my lab environment or, or what I'm running, um, it is very simple. I'm running Cisco DNA Center 2123. Um, so this version of Cisco DNA Center is also known as Cyclops. This specific version is right now in testing and controlled availability. Um, the release version or the generally available version will be out here in a few weeks towards the end of November 2020. Uh, the reason I'm using this version is because uh, plug and play on a Catalyst 9800 WLC is supported in this version. So that is a brand new feature. Um, I'm going to be using Cisco ICE 2.7 patch 2. Uh, I've got a few Catalyst 9300 switches that are all running iOS XE 1731 and a, a Catalyst 9800 WLC uh, that's also running iOS XE 7, 1731. So again, that's, this version is required for plug and play on the Catalyst 9800. So uh, let's, uh, let's just get into our topology, our lab topology and review it and then we'll get started. 
So uh, let's look at our topology real quick. Um, it, it does look a little complicated, but it, I promise it's actually a little it's simpler than it, than it looks. So starting at the top, um, we've got our shared services up here. This would be typically in a data center, right? So we've got DNA center. Uh, we've got a web server for testing. We've got a DNS server, a DHCP server over here. Uh, we've got ICE, and we also have our Cisco uh, 9800 WLC running in a, a, a VM in, under VMware. So that's our that's our data center, uh, our shared services plus the WLC, um, and then coming down here is just basically you know emulating our WAN connection from uh, from the data center to our branch or to our campus. Um, we do have a fusion router here. Um, I'm not going to get into the fusion router too much, uh, the, because it, it tends to be over complicated. Um, when it's discussed, um, and there's also probably 10 or 20 different ways to um, provide the fusion function with an SDA fabric. Um, and uh, it is pre-configured. It does have a configuration on it that I'm using just to save some time. Um, I'll talk a little bit about it when I get to border automation, but um, for now, uh, I'm not going to cover the fusion router too deeply. And I've just got a simple layer two switch here between the fusion router and my fabric. So this is the fabric. This is the important part here. Um, we've got four 9300s. Um, I don't have a cloud here, but this is basically going to be our San Jose site. And over here will be our San Francisco site. And uh, said so there's four 9300s here. We've got a, a, a switch that uh, is acting as a control plane and a border. Um, we've got a fabric edge switch down here. Um, this is going to be our transit control plane, and that transit control plane is used for SDA for uh, distributed campus or multi-site. Um, so again, it's just a 9300. It'll act as a transit control plane, which is required for multi-site. And then we've got our fabric in a box. And the fabric in a box, uh, as I mentioned in the intro, is uh, where you can run all of the SDA features um, in one device, in one switch. So this switch here will be our border router, our control plane, our fabric edge. It's also going to have embedded wireless enabled, which will allow it to act as a WLC. So you can see here we've got an access point that's connected to the fabric in a box. Uh, we've got an access point connected to this traditional fabric edge over here in San Jose. Um, we've got some test clients, including a wireless test client that we'll use to connect to both the uh, uh, the wireless network over here in San Jose, and then we'll switch it over to the wireless network here in San Francisco. So um, one other thing to point out, and, and I mentioned at the top, this is using zero touch. And what do I mean by zero touch? Um, so I'm not talking about zero touch provisioning, which is actually a technical feature. Um, we're actually going to be using plug and play. Um, all four of these 9300s here and the 9800 are in an out of the box state right now. So uh, what do I mean by that? If we jump over to our edge switch, um, we can see it's sitting at the auto config prompt, the same prompt that you would get if you were just pulling a switch or any Cisco device really out of the box and connecting it to the network and looking at the console, you would see this switch. So you should recognize what this prompt is. It hasn't changed for about 25 or 30 years. So um, all of the switches here uh, are in that state. And um, that's what I mean by zero touch. We're going to bring them in uh, into the network. We're going to onboard them onto the network and build our SDA fabric without ever touching the console of those devices. So that's where we're going to get started, and uh, let's uh, let's jump into the demo. So we're in uh, Cisco DNA Center here, and I mentioned at the top that this is the um, 2123 version or Cyclops. Um, it's not that much different uh, from a UI perspective. The workflows are pretty much the same. Um, <clears throat> we do have a little bit of a, uh, a difference as far as navigation is concerned. Over here, we've got this hamburger menu. Uh, that we can click on to jump to the various sections uh, where before we had a, a three by three, um, I guess a, a waffle is it called up here that we, uh, how we would navigate around. So this hamburger menu is, is, uh, is now part of DNA Center um, and it does make it easier to jump around from different sections. So um, the main screen is the same. We've still got our uh, assurance uh, data um, and, and our dashboard. So um, there is some pre-configuration that I've done uh, in, in this, um, again, mostly just in the interest of time. Um, I've built out some sites. I've got a, a Bay Area uh, and that's broken down into San Francisco Building 1 and San Jose Building 13. And if we click on any of those, we can see that it'll, the, uh, the map will zoom in uh, to where that location is. Uh, and then under each of these two buildings, we've got uh, a pair of floors as well so that we can assign our devices to. So again, nothing, nothing crazy or too custom, um, just some things that I did ahead of time to, um, 
to get us ready for the demo. Um, the other thing that I've already kind of done ahead of time is, is put in my network settings, including um, our integration with ICE. So uh, if we go down here into network settings, we can see I've already got <clears throat> ICE servers uh, assigned to uh, for network authentication and for client authentication. Um, and I've got some uh, values plugged in for DNS servers and uh, NTP servers and the, that kind of stuff. So uh, like I said, this is pretty standard. Uh, these are settings that have existed in DNA Center since day one. Uh, so nothing nothing too crazy here. Um, I've also got device credentials set, again, pretty standard, and uh, um, uh, IP address pools that I've already defined. So um, for, for our testing or for our demos, uh, we're just using our basic pools. We're get, we've got a pool here for, uh, let me get into it. We've got a pool for campus users. Um, a pool for access points that uh, where the access points will get their IP addresses from, uh, pool for extended node, which we're not going to do in this demo, uh, pool for guest users, pool that we're going to use for the LAN automation, which is key, uh, and then also down here a transit pool, and this transit pool is actually going to be used for border automation, which I'll get into when I start building the fabric out. Um, I think that's all I've already got configured. Oh, I do have one more thing, and, and it's important to show. Um, I already have a, a couple of templates defined in DNA Center. Um, the one, the first template is the template that we will use to onboard our uh, our control plane border one device, which is the device that we'll use uh, as a seed node uh, for LAN automation. So this is the device. This is the the onboarding configuration is actually what is pushed to device during plug and play. Uh, and the configuration is very, very simple. You can hear, see here, I've enabled IP routing, I've disabled domain lookup so that when I make a typo, uh, it doesn't sit there and, and pause for two minutes before it gives me an error. Uh, I've set the system MTU to 9100. So uh, MTU is, uh, is a good, good topic to talk about, uh, but probably too much for this video. However, just keep in mind that because uh, Cisco Software Defined Access is uh, an overlay-based technology, um, we do need to increase the MTU to uh, allow for the headers, uh, an increase in header size for traffic that's actually going across the data plane. Um, other than that, again, this is, an, this is a typical onboarding template. It doesn't even, it's not even specific to SDA. The only really SDA specific uh, command I'm using here is to increase the MTU. So I'm just uh, creating a loopback interface, uh, giving it an IP address, uh, a couple of routes so that we can get out of the router or to get out of the switch. I am uh, giving it a static IP address on the SVI interface, uh, on the point-to-point -point interface to the Fusion router. And uh, I'm just changing the source interface for the uh, HTTP client so that I can manage the device from using the loopback address instead of managing it using the interface address. So again, pretty standard onboarding template, very, very simple. Uh, all it does is once plug and play kicks in and the device is onboarded, it'll push this config to the switch. Uh, it'll read the config into the running config and then uh, the device will come online and have connectivity. And it's after that that you would push your uh, further configuration via templates. So uh, again, pretty typical onboarding template, very short, very clear, uh, easy to read. The other template that I've all already put in here is something that I'll, um, um, that I'll push when we do our device provisioning. But it's just a it's just an EEM script that I'm using to reset my devices when I'm when I'm done. So there's nothing in this template that is uh, that you really need to know. Uh, it's just an example of, of something you can do. Uh, and again, you can see this interface, the template interface in Cisco DNA Center. It, it allows you to use uh, you just use your typical iOS XE commands. Um, it doesn't do proper syntax checking now, so you do have to be careful uh, that you don't have typos or invalid commands in here. Um, but you, again, you just type in the commands and you save the template, you commit the template, uh, and then that template is pushed during um, during provisioning. So um, I, I will point out with templates, again, I, I said I wasn't going to go too deep into them, but I will point this out. Templates um, not only uh, accept iOS XE commands that will actually be pushed to the device, but you can do scripting within templates, either using uh, Velocity, which is a, a scripting language, or Jinja2, which is also a scripting language. So this introduction of Jinja2 as a templating language uh, is also introduced in uh, Cisco DNA Center Cyclops. So that's it for our templates. Um, that's kind of give, give you an idea of uh, what's already been done in my DNA Cisco DNA Center, including integration of ICE. And then next, we're going to go have a look at our, uh, our plug and play section and uh, get the device on board.